Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on calcium signaling. In this video, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the, um, let me pull this down, at the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. Endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. Okay, so uh, I've talked in previous videos about um, how... Uh, calcium is kept very, very low within the cytoplasm, generally around at a concentration of 100 nanomolar, uh, whereas calcium outside the cell is much, much higher. So if I draw a cell here, the intracellular concentration of calcium is very low, approximately, as I said, 100 nanomolar. Whereas the extracellular concentration of calcium is usually around 1.5 millimolar. And we've discussed how you maintain that through uh, having uh, the plasma membrane calcium ATPase protein, uh, which extrudes a single calcium ion uh, for, uh, uh, for each ATP molecule that is hydrolyzed. So an ATP molecule comes in and is hydrolyzed to ADP um, uh, and inorganic phosphate. Uh, and also in um, tissues where you're going to have to deal with uh, transiently very high calcium concentrations, you also have the sodium uh, calcium exchanger. So in all tissues you have this uh, plasma membrane associated calcium ATPase. But in tissues that are going to have to deal with very high concentrations of calcium transiently, which need to be uh, rectified very quickly, you also have the sodium calcium exchanger. And the need for that is that this uh, plasma membrane associated calcium ATPase uh, has a maximum capacity of pumping about 150 uh, calcium ions per second, basically, um, which isn't very much considering that a channel can let in a million calcium ions a second. So you need another um, another pump to remove calcium that will act quicker, and this one uh, can has a capacity of around 5,000 calcium ions per second. So that's a, a, a larger, a more substantial number of calcium ions. Okay, right. Now, calcium is very, very low, 100 nanomolar in the cytoplasm, but there are intracellular organelles which have a higher concentration of calcium than that, and one of them is the endoplasmic reticulum. So that's what the topic for this video is, the endoplasmic reticulum. Another is the mitochondria, but we'll come to that later. So this organelle here is the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if this cell was a skeletal muscle cell, the endoplasmic reticulum would no longer be called the endoplasmic reticulum. Instead, the equivalent organelle in skeletal muscle is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, but it does the same thing as far as calcium homeostasis is concerned. So I'll put endoplasmic slash sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, right. And basically, calcium levels in the uh, endoplasmic or sarcoplasmic reticulum are very, very high. Uh, and it's a source of calcium that can be used for calcium signaling. For instance, in the protein kinase C pathway, uh, the calcium that uh, is re it, the, the calcium that goes up in the cytoplasm that doesn't come from the extracellular uh, fluid. It comes instead from the endoplasmic reticulum. So you can release calcium from this intracellular organelle to cause a calcium signaling cascade, or you can really uh, let calcium come in from the extracellular fluid. Okay, so how do you keep this calcium so high within the endoplasmic reticulum? Well, basically, what you need is some pump which is bringing calcium into the endoplasmic reticulum, and this is the sarco-endoplasmic uh, reticulum calcium ATPA. So basically, you have a pump in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, and this pump is known as the sarco-endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase, and that's often abbreviated as S for sarco, E for endoplasmic, R for reticulum, C for calcium, and then A for ATPase, the circa. So this is the circa pump. Okay, right, so what does circa do? Well, circa requires ATP, clearly, because it's an ATPase. So basically, what it does is it uses ATP. So let's draw the circa out here. 
basically what it's going to do is it's going to take in the molecule of ATP, it's going to hydrolyze it to ADP and inorganic phosphate, and when with the energy that's released from the ATP uh, being hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate, what it's going to do is it's going to pump two calcium ions into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And in exchange for that, it's also going to bring free protons out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So out come free protons at the same time. Okay, so I might, I should have probably denoted that to have my notation consistent. I should have had two arrows for that. So basically, circa pumps two calcium ions into the endoplasmic reticulum. And to do that, it uses ATP hydrolysis to provide the energy. And it also couples the movement of two calciums into the endoplasmic reticular lumen uh, with the movement of free protons out of the endoplasmic reticular lumen. OK, so in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at the actual detailed mechanism by which Circa works.